This clip is on the Poisson distribution and uh, mainly on the uh, calculations required to uh, get probabilities for the Poisson distribution. But just first, we'll start with a few characteristics. It uh, is a distribution for a discrete random variable, and the type of outcomes. Uh, this variable can take are uh, the natural numbers um, starting with zero. You have to count that then to the natural numbers two, three, four, and so forth, um, but potentially until infinity. That means that in the end we'll, we'll be looking at a, a probability distribution. Let's call the random variable b for whatever reason. We'll, uh, that's um, to stick with the example in the lecture and if you have a discrete random variable then the probability distribution is going to have discrete probabilities okay it's going to look something like this okay what, whatever the shape exactly is who knows but we'll be able to look at it in this sort of thing where each of these bars represents the height of these bars represents the probability for a particular outcome and here the outcomes can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so forth. It could of course be that this distribution has basically no outcomes, no probability for outcomes at 0. It could be that we have you know, probabilities looking something like this, but for values of say 107 and 108, 106 and so forth. Okay, uh, it could be that the probabilities at zero are indeed very very small. Um, so, and you see somehow, so that means we need a parameter, this distribution somehow needs to differentiate between where the mass of this probability is, whether that is for very small values or whether that is for larger sort of values. That parameter, so we have one parameter and we call that mu. You could call it whatever you, uh, you want to call it, but we'll call it, we call it mu. So, uh, everything we'll do here as it is a discrete probability it hinges on being able to calculate these sort of probabilities, this height here. Okay, so we want to calculate probabilities that our random variable b takes a certain value, let's say little b. And we need to know what the formula for this sort of probability is. And here's a formula for you, uh, for you to learn. It will depend on two things. Okay? It will depend on this parameter mu and on the outcome b we are looking at. So the formula which you need to know is, uh, let me just use green for the mu, mu to the power of b times the exponential of negative mu divided by the factorial. So see the, the basically the black bits are just mathematical operators the factorial the exponential bit the green are the two values are circled here the parameter value and the outcome for which we are calculating the probability before we continue I just want to make sure you know what uh, this B factorial means so let's have a little note okay so b factorial is basically 1 times 2 times 
3, whoops, that was a funny 3, up to B. Okay, so an example, if B equals 5, then 5 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, and that is 5 times 4 is 20 times 3 is 60 times 2, that would be 120. And you can see that these numbers become actually fairly large very quickly. Okay, at the end of the note, or one extra addition uh, to the note, there's a special case. A special case, what is zero factorial? Zero factorial is defined as one. Okay, and that's important uh, to know. All right, with this, we can. Um, go to our example. So let's use the lecture example. Let me uh, leave that formula just in the picture. So we'll have an example. And the example we use in the lecture is that we are looking at a B&B and breakfast place and how many booking requests they get and say, let's say, the mu they know the mu is 8. So, and let's, they know, let's say they know that B is equal to the number of booking requests per day. Requests per day. So that's a feature of a Poisson distribution that usually it is the number of some sort of events during a time interval here a day. So let's say what we want to know is the probability that they get exactly three booking requests on that day. So let's apply that formula. Okay, so mu is 8, so we have 8 to the power of b. This guy here, this is our little b, so it's 8 to the power of 3 times e to the negative 8 divided by b factorial, so that's 3 factorial. So for this we'll just get our calculator up. So firstly uh, the only tricky bit here is, so we can see here's a factorial, let's just check that 5 factorial is 120 indeed. Uh, the other bit is the e, the exponential. It turns out that in this window calculator you have first have to press the inf that shows the alternative functions. So e to the x, so for instance 8 um, negative exponential is that value, yeah, 3.354. So let's just continue. So we already calculated e to the negative 8. So now we need to multiply this with 8 to the third. There's a cube here, so that's fine. Uh, close this. So that is 0 0.17. And now we need to divide this by 3 factorial. 3 factorial. So what we get is 0 0.0286. 0.0286. Okay, so that's our probability that B will take the value of 3, and let's calculate the second pro probability just for practice. What's the probability that they get exactly 8 booking requests? So that's going to be 8 to the power of 8 times e to the negative 8 divided by 8 factorial, lots of 8s here, but they are two different things, okay? We have a mu and a b. It just so happens that in this case both mu and b are the same. And you can uh, get your calculator out and do the calculations and you'll find that um, we get 0 0.1396. So, let us just see what we've established so far in terms of a probability distribution. So our b can take values from 0, 1, well, 
one, two, three, four, and quite a few numbers, to eight, nine, and so forth. So what we've just calculated is that the probability that our outcome is exactly three is 0 0.0286. So let's draw a bar, and that height of the bar is 0 0.0286. And we've also calculated the probability for 8, and here the probability is significantly larger. It's about 14%, so it's perhaps something, something like this. So the height here is 0.1396. So that's what we calculated. Clearly we haven't calculated the whole probability distribution as sort of you know, sketched here. Uh, at this stage we've only calculated two of these probabilities but of course you could calculate it, calculate as many as uh, you would want. In principle it is going to look uh, something. There's going to be a um, distribution which will look something like this. Okay, here also get a smaller probability here smaller still, smaller still, and then there are more probabilities coming here. Now it turns out that the maximum probability actually happens at the mean of 8. Okay, so the probabilities will go down beyond that. So the next question is, can we do this in a different color? Now we want the probability of B being, let's say, smaller or equal than 3. So now some basic probability laws will come into account. We have our outcomes, they are non-overlapping. The outcome is either 0 or 1, but it can't be both at the same time. That means to calculate discrete probabilities, we can use the fact that we can add up such non-overlapping the probabilities for such non-overlapping events. So b smaller or equal to 3 means we need to calculate the probability that b is what's the smallest possible outcome, that's 0, plus the probability that b equals 1, plus the probability that b equals 2, plus the probability that b equals 3, and that's it. That's the maximum outcome allowed here. Graphically, this will be the sum of these four probabilities. Now we've also already calculated one of them, okay? Uh, this value up on 286, that is of course exactly that value here. So that means what we what we need now is we need to calculate these remaining probabilities. So we have so what we need for here is the probability that b equals naught. That is going to be 8 to the power 0 times e to the negative 8 divided by naught factorial. We know that's a special case that is equal to 1. Plus, now the probability that b is equal to 1, that is 8 to the power of 1 e to the negative 8 divided by 1 factorial plus 8 and the power of 2 e to the negative 8 2 factorial and then plus the result we already know 0 0.0286 so if you calculate this all these th three probabilities in exactly the same manner how we calculated these and you add everything together what you get is 0 0.04 Two, three, eight, and it goes without saying that I expect you that you check that you can uh, reconstruct these results. So it means probabilities of this type, small or equal, we can calculate this way. Now we can immediately from here, of course, calculate probability of this type. It's the probability that b is larger than three, or that would be the same that the probability, actually, let me just undo this and use a different uh, color. So the probability that B 
is larger than 3. This is the same as the probability of B being large or equal to 4. Graphically, this will be the sum of all these probabilities, but of course continued for all those which you can't see in this graph. So does that mean that we have to calculate an infinite amount of these uh, little probabilities? No, because we know that this is the same as 1 minus the probability we have just calculated that b is smaller or equal to 3 because the outcome has to be either of these. The outcome is going to be smaller than 3 or it's going to be larger than, uh, smaller or equal than 3 or it's going to be larger than 3. So the two of these have to add together to 1. That means if we have 1, like this one, we can calculate the other by subtracting the one we have from 1. That means in our particular case that is going to be equal to 1 minus 0.04238 and that is equal to 0 0.9578 six two okay so that probability the sum of all these probabilities is that or point nine five seven six two and the sum of all these probabilities here turned out to be o point o four two three eight so this is how we do basic calculations for the Poisson distribution when we talked about the normal distribution, I said one feature of the normal distribution is that it can be used to approximate other distributions. And that's exactly the case here for the Poisson distribution. And let me show you in what sense the normal distribution can approximate the Poisson distribution. So we're talking about the normal approximation of the Poisson distribution. So it turns out that for, and I'll just write that down here and I'll explain it in a minute, for sufficiently large mu a Poisson distribution with parameter mu remember the Poisson distribution only has one parameter called mu can be approximated by a normal distribution by a normal distribution okay now of course we know a normal distribution has two parameters so we have to be clear what the two parameters are and it turns out that the two parameters the mean is mu and in fact the variance is mu as well. So this is the distribution, the normal distribution we can use to approximate the mu. So let's try this. Try this. We above we calculated that the probability for our b to be small or equal to 3 was equal to 0.04238. Okay, that was for a, for a Poisson distribution with mu equals 8. So let's see how we uh, how we get there using the uh, normal distribution. So that means 
uh, we do this in a different color. Let's say for the normal distribution with mu mu parameters. So that means for normal distribution with mean eight and variance eight. We know we can calculate probabilities that set. So sorry. Uh, so if we say, let me just undo that last last bit. So what we are now saying is that we have a new random variable. Let me call it um, x. Okay. So. We're saying that x is distributed with that distribution, okay, just the other way around. x is distributed with normal 8, 8. And now we'll see uh, when we calculate this probability, x is small or equal than 3, whether these two guys here, whether this and this, okay, are they equal? Are they equal? Now, one answer we can already give to this, and that follows from this word approximated. Okay, so that makes us answer uh, no, okay, not equal, but hopefully close. And we'll determine how close it really is. Now, if we have this information here, we have a random variable x that is distributed like this, and we want to calculate a probability here, we know that we can calculate that. We can calculate that by translating the problem into a standard normal problem. We're saying that this probability is the same as probability that z is small or equal. Now we need to apply the standardization to that value 3. Okay, That 3 needs to be standardized. How do we standardize it? By subtracting the mean. Okay, That is this guy here. This is being subtracted. And by dividing with the standard deviation. Now dividing with the standard deviation our variance is 8, so the standard deviation is going to be square root 8. And that 8, that comes from here. Okay, That 8 comes from here, from the variance. So, um, so that means we need to calculate what 3 minus 8 divided by the square root of 8 is. Uh, that's of course just algebra, and I've solved that before, so I can tell you that that is negative 1.77. So that's the same as the probability that z is smaller than negative 1.77. And we can read this from the table. You, you, by now you should know that, so I'm not going to show that. You can test yourself again to confirm that you get the same probability to that is 0.0384. So now we can see whether these guys are really the same. So here's our correct value 0.04, 4.2% and here's our approximation 3.8%. So they are the same ballpark but they are not exactly the same. Okay, But note that I said above here for sufficiently large mu. So it turns out 8 is possibly not sufficiently large yet to be really really accurate. So what about uh, another example? So let's say that we have a Poisson distribution. With mu equal to 1713. I just made this value up. Okay. So if we now wanted to calculate, use our uh, probability, so let's say that is, uh, we give it a new name. Let's say this is a random variable m, which is Poisson distributed. So this p is for Poisson. 
distributed with parameter 1713. So if we now wanted to calculate probability that m is smaller or equal than 1700. Now if we use our above sort of way of solving that in the Poisson distribution, as we've done it here, what we would do is we would say, well, that is equal to the probability that m is equal to 0 plus the probability that m is equal to 1 plus the probability that m is equal to 2 plus and then a lot of probabilities plus the probability that m is equal to 1699 plus the probability that m is equal to 1700. Whew. This is 1701 probabilities to calculate for each of them to calculate a probability of this sort of type. Now in Excel this of course is possible. You can do you can do that, you can automate this. Um, but it now turns out that if we have a mu like this, okay, so this mu that is indeed really large. And that means we can use the approximation. Approximation, and we'd say that M is approximately distributed. I'll put a little approximately distributed here, here as a normal distribution with mean 1713 and variance 1713. That means that the probability of m being smaller or equal than 1700 is the same as the probability of z being smaller or equal than uh, the 1700, but we need to standardize it, so we subtract the mean 1713 and we divide by the standard deviation, which is the square root of this 1713. Okay, and again, this can be calculated using the normal distribution table. Okay, so that's not that's not a problem. Now, I don't know what that is. You can calculate that yourself, but that should be obvious how to solve this. So, in this case, the approximation is easy to calculate. With your current knowledge, not for someone who didn't do the course, this guy here is difficult to calculate. And as it turns out, both results would be very, very similar. It would be very, very similar, such that it's not too big a price to use the approximation. So that's the point of the approximation, to make your life easier. But you need to know when that approximation works. So in our case, it works for large mu. What is a large mu? I can't tell you exactly. In the additional lecture notes, you can see a little illustration that illuminates this a bit more.